Morning, boys and girls. It's uh, Saturday, the 5th of October, 2013. My name's Chris Reardon. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. It's 12 midday. Now, we've already had a question. A, a question has poured in. To the, uh, to the Facebook system this morning, boys and girls. A question has poured in from young Sean, who wants to know, is midday classed as morning and afternoon? Which I think that's a perfectly reasonable question, Sean. Is it? Is midday classed as morning or afternoon? Anyone any idea? Do let us know. There's an email address if you want to join in at any time, whether you're watching us live or watching the recording. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, you may well be with us live. How do you know if you're with us live or watching a recording? Very easy. Have a quick look at your clock, wherever that is. OK, mine's up there. Have a look at your clock. If it's kind of coming up to a couple of minutes past midday, Morning or afternoon, we're not sure what that is now. Sean has, Sean has thrown us into confusion this morning. Or is it afternoon? No, it's afternoon. No, it's afternoon now. So therefore, is 12 midday? Is that after? It's got to be afternoon, isn't it? Surely, Sean. You're like one of my quiz show people. My, my quiz night people. I host this quiz on Tuesdays at a pub in uh, Rotherhide called the Mayflower. And generally, 99% of the people take the quiz for what it is. You read a question, they write down the answer. But there are people there, and they're the same... Well, I think there's one, two, three people. Three people, OK? Who constantly question the questions. Right? A, 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 an example would be exactly what you've just said there, Sean. You know, is 12... Uh, uh, I, I might ask the question... Um, uh, was I born at 12 midday? OK, I might ask that. Or not, not me, but was, uh, was, was Barry Manilow born at 12 o'clock midday? And one of these three, uh, three people, I, I practically guarantee you, will answer, oh, is, is that 12 p.m. midday morning or is it 12 p.m. midday afternoon? Three of those. It, and it's only three people. Fortunately, they're never there at the same... Oh, they do piss me off. They Sorry, I, I don't mean to swear. They do get on my nerves. They do. Every now and again, one of these three people, who fortunately don't all turn up at the same time, OK, they will ask me a question about the question. And you're like, oh, God. And it, you know, uh, you, you try and not look stressed, because sometimes I think that they're just doing it to wind me up. I mean, they, they wouldn't do something like that, would they? Do you think? I'm sure they are. Anyway, so that's the, that's the question this morning. Uh, Sean wants to know, is it morning or afternoon? OK, so once again, look at your clock. If it's just coming up to about five past twelve on Saturday, the, uh, was it, the 5th of October 2013, if that's the time where you are now, that's UK time, uh, we're in British summer time at the moment, then you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live by many, many different methods, either by the email, which I've already told you about, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you have Skype, you can join in at Skype, either by sending messages or indeed by calling in. The Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. If you add, uh, uh, click the add contact thing on there, uh, I'll happily add you, OK? Once again, the Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. No Skype? Not to worry. Have you got a phone? Have you got a phone? I have a local London number for you to ring. It is not a premium rate number. It is a local London number. If you want to call in by phone, that's easy to do. 20 8133 Six three five eight. We can put that up as well. O two O eight one double three six three five eight. Okay. And there it is. 
on the screen for you as well, those of you watching live. 020 8133 6358, along with the uh, Skype username. Uh, good morning to uh, Fagash Leal, who says, Midday must be afternoon as it's 12 pm, whereas midnight is 12 am. So, midnight. Ah, so it, it's midnight. Uh, now, the thing is here, Matt, uh, uh, Lil, okay, is midnight 12 a.m.? Is midnight, the clue is in the name, night time, or is it morning because it says 12 a.m.? Can it be both? Fagash Lil, good morning. Nice of you to be with us today. She's had a bit of hassle recently, haven't you, Fagash Lil? But she's, she's coming up trumps. She's coming up trumps. Give us a smile. Come on, that's it, Fagash Lil. Give us a smile. Yes, it, th there's another question for you there. So is midnight, morning, or night time? There's another one for you. Let us know what you think of that, all right? Um, Barry Manilow fans, who are with us this morning, would like to know that uh, the Barry Manilow calendar behind me has changed. Uh, we're now on October, of course. And in this particular picture, he is wearing a... But is it just a minute? Let me have a look. He's got this like black jacket on with lots of little. They almost look like sparkling lights on his jacket. So don't worry, because the Barry Manilow fans, uh, like myself, get very upset um, uh, if I if I forget to change the um, uh, the calendar behind me. So I have changed it this morning. All right. Good morning to Anita who's with us at some point. I think she watches the recording. And indeed, uh, Wendy, who's in the UK, all great Barry Manilow fans. I know we've got a few more uh, watching. Uh, I'm, I'm going to see him three times next. I know it's sad, isn't it? I know, Barry Manilow fans will not understand this. They will think this is very sad, but I am actually going to see him three times next year. How fantastic is that? Uh, once in Florida, uh, in January... I will be taking my nephew to Florida as well, although he's sadly he's not really interested in coming to see Barry. I don't know why. You know, sixteen year old boy, you would think he'd be looking forward to coming with great Uncle Chris or Uncle Chris to see Barry Manilow, but I'm afraid he's declined the offer on that one. He did, however, ask if Justin Bieber was on anywhere or Justin Bieber was anywhere. He might like to quite go and see him, but I'm not sure. Not quite sure if I want to go and see a, you know, a, a, a lad on the stage who keeps spitting at people, which is what he did, isn't it? Did you see that in the papers? <laughs> I'm sure he was just having a little bit of fun. Mind you, these girls, you know, they, they'd happily probably catch the piece of spit that was coming down from the balcony. Justin Bieber. I think he's very talented, Justin. I do. Actually, you know, when, when I think about it, I mean, I would actually like to go and... I would go with my nephew and see Justin Bieber at a concert. I think he's very talented. Very talented. Do you? Huh? Well, let me know. Let me know who you... Who would you like to go and see in concert? I'd, I wish I'd gone to see ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra. It's one of the things when I do karaoke. I, I host karaoke on the Sunday, Mondays and Wednesdays at uh, uh, two of the Belushi's brands in London. And uh, one of the songs I do is Mr. Blue Sky. Sun is shining in the sky. There ain't no cloud above. I nearly know the... I only tend to know the first two lines. Without the words appearing on the screen, I'd be completely useless. You know. I could, I could, I could never... I remember being in the um, Scouts, Cubs... Do your best. I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to God and the Queen to help other people and keep the Scout law. See, I remember it. Do you remember your Scout promise, boys and girls? Eh? And we had this show. It was a gang show. And I had so much difficulty learning lines. I, I usually generally managed by the time the show was due on, because it would be like three or four months of rehearsals. By the time the show was on, I usually managed to remember the words to maybe the first half of the first verse and the chorus to the songs that were within the show. When it came to sketches, like, you know, sort of mini plays, oh, just hopeless. I just could not learn the words. It got so bad that one year I... I pretended that my foot, I, I, I'd hurt my foot, but I actually pretended it was a lot worse than it really was. Because I just couldn't remember the lines. 
you know, and I, 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 I'd read them, read them and read them and read them, and I could not learn the lines. Oh, yeah, perhaps you're an actor and an actress. How on earth do you learn lines? It's very, very difficult. You know, the people on the telly, it's all very well seeing, I don't know, Casualty, Doctor Who, or that new excellent programme on BBC One on Saturday nights, Atlantis. Have you seen that yet? That's the kind of replacement for um, Merlin. Very, very good indeed. Watch that. Saturday nights, BBC One, I think um, around 7 o'clock sort of time. Can't remember the exact time. We had the first one on last week. It's really good. Have a watch of that, Atlantis on BBC One. But when people on the television, when they learn the line, well, that, they do kind of learn their lines, but they also, each bit is filmed in little bits, isn't it? So if they fluff the lines, they've got some some woman or some bloke standing there. Oh, no, you got that wrong. You've got to say da-da-da-da. OK, so da-da-da-da-da-da. So they've only got to learn a couple of lines at a time. And once they've said that, they can forget it. When you're in a play, you've got to learn the the entire, you know, the entire play, haven't you? How do you do that? It's almost like, you know, I don't know if you read, I, 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 I don't have the patience to read. And this is a short story, I, I get to sort of page 10 and then I give up. I see, the funny thing is reading books, I, I, I see that, and I've said this before, you, you see the thick book, you read 10 pages, and then instead of seeing the rest of the story, all I see is the other 400 pages. I, oh God, I haven't got time to read this. And I put the book down, I just waste, I waste money on books, I mustn't buy any more books. I don't know if it's any easier with one of those, um, uh, what are they called, uh, Crindle? Cri what is it? Um, Kindle, isn't it? Kindle or electronic readers. I don't know if I'd be, be, be any better with one of those. But, it, it, you know, to be in a play, it must be almost having to learn an entire book word for word. How on earth do they do that? I was completely useless at anything like that. However... When it comes to ad-libbing, I'm not too bad on the ad-libbing, you know? I mean, look, like, we're sitting here now. Don't think I'm sitting here with nothing in front of me. I've got, like, one-liners here to, to kind of jog my memory. Bits and pieces, you know, that I want to talk about today. And I'll work on it as the show goes through. We generally don't get to the end of it. I must say, we, we, we never get to the end of it. Indeed, by now, I should have done four or five stories. There's only one marked off. Because I've been kind of going on to other subjects with me ad-libbing, haven't I? Don't know why. Not bad on the ad-libbing. Uh, Fag Ashley says, With my timekeeping, midnight is definitely morning. Yeah, but why does it say night then, Fag Ashley? It says night. She says, Sending a wonky smile back to you. Sending a wonky one to you, Fag Ashley. <laughs> Send a wonky smile to you. It's our secret, isn't it? It's our secret. Uh, good morning to Merlin, who's not with us very long this morning because he's going out for a run. He's got a... Let me have a look. Where is it now? He's got a 10-kilometre run. To, well, what's that in miles, dear? I don't know what a kilometre is. What is that in miles? Someone convert that, please. A 10-kilometre... Oh, dear. <laughs> a text message has just come in on the phone as well. In a second. Um, Merlin, can you tell us... Can you tell us what is a t ten... What's ten kilometres? Someone convert that, please, and send it in nice and quickly. And uh, my, my, my best friend from years ago, Steve, is with us uh, this morning. Steve is an ambulance driver known Steve for many, many years when I used to live in Wandsworth. Is this the first... Oh, another one. Wait a minute. We're going to have to turn this off, aren't we? I can see that. Hang on. Why is that emergency? Dimpson. Dimpson Hall. He's, we want us to know, is it the same glitter ball that we had from Dimpson Hall? Um, I think it is, actually. It might... Is it? It might, I'm sure it is. I don't ever remember buying another one. When I kind of stopped doing the mobiles, I, I didn't throw everything away. I used to do, do a lot of mobile discos. Don't do many of those at all. Though. Just, a, just a handful of those a year, if that, funnily enough. And um, the uh, uh, I, I had this big kit that we used to travel around in this old blue transit van. 
and this this thing was falling apart. This old blue transvader with big rust things in the in the wings. I mean, you, these days you would never be allowed um, to uh, uh, drive something around like that. You'd have to patch it up and all that, but all to replace the wings. Although we'd, I did that eventually. Um, we used to go to all these places, uh, weddings, social clubs, things like that. One of the places was Dimpson Hall, which was in Battersea. It's one of the, the very first social clubs I ever DJed at. And uh, it was a good night, actually. I'm, I'm going back here about 25 years, possibly a little bit more than that, even. And we had this big setup, and in front of me was this big pink arch, which had flashing lights, which went all the way around it. In the middle, a little sign that says Reared Disco. I know, a dreadful name, and it Reards Disco. It was called Reards. It was my um, one of my mates. Uh, who was it now? Andy. That's it, Andy. He he used to call me as as a nickname Reards because my surname's Reardon. So his his nickname Reards. Come over here. That sort of thing. So we called it Reards Disco. We had this the big thing, and where was the mirror ball? The mirror ball, I think, wasn't in the middle, was it? It was on a big stand, or or we hung it from places. This this mirror ball, which is, and that's the one behind me there. There was one place I think uh, where we sort of precare it. I mean, we we would never be allowed to do after the things there because health and safety, you know. But um, one of the places I remember it being in, like a school hall, I think it was, but it was a nighttime event. It wasn't a an event for children. Can't remember. Possibly an engagement party, something like that. Maybe a, a birthday part of some hall. But it was in a school hall, like a gym hall. And surrounding us were gym apparatus, including, you know, you've got those ladders that go all the way up and people climb up and down them, or kids climb up and down them. Children, I hate that word, kids. Children climb up and down them while they're in the uh, gym doing their exercise and all that. Uh, but there was one behind us. And on this, we kind of stuck out a pole at right angles and the only way to get it to stay in place was literally to tape it up so we put loads and loads of this gaffer tape around this thing and sure enough it was sticking out like that kind of above me and below it we hung the mirror ball now these mirror balls right i mean they're 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 not they're not as heavy as you would think on the other hand they're not light if one fell on your head, you 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 might you could well die. <laughs> I mean that, that's the truth of it. It nearly happened to um. Oh, what's his name? Who's the guy in Culture Club? George O'Dowd. Um, Boy George. Nearly happened to Boy George on a stage once. He was running across this stage, and his this mirror ball just suddenly just dropped down and just missed him. But it would 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 would. It would knock you out, at least, possibly even kill you. So we were doing this gig, and I remember looking out and, you know, a few people dancing. Often you don't get too many people dancing at these uh, sort of family events, but that's okay, you know, if people are, like to talk. They haven't seen each other for years and years, and they just like to talk to each other, that sort of thing. Um, so we had a few people dancing, and all of a sudden, I saw this, this arm with the mirror ball drop down significantly. You know, sort of two or three feet. Now, it was quite high up. So, fortunately, it didn't drop down far enough to hit anyone on the head. I thought, oh, my God. I, thought, oh, I don't think anyone else saw it. I think Steve saw it, who uh, it just sent me the text message there. Didn't you? Steve saw it, all right. <laughs> and I sort of climbed, but I, you know, I better check that's all right. And sure enough, the reason it hadn't fall fallen down any further is because we'd put so much tape over it just in case it fell. So, I mean, it, you know, safety. Always make sure your stuff is safe, all right? Uh, Sean, so nice to have you, Steve. I don't know if you're with us uh, the whole time. We'll probably be about, about an hour and a half, two hours, chatting rubbish as usual, as I've always done, as you know. Steve is an ambulance driver, incidentally, boys and girls. Very important job. Um, not well paid enough, along with the nurses. They're not well paid enough either. Did you see that story um, on the news this morning? I think uh, the government are now saying that uh, NHS workers are not going to get their 1%. Remember, it's only 1%. Tiny, insignificant amount. Or it was, maybe it is significant to them. They were promised a 1% pay rise, apparently. And other people at the NHS, they say, um, well, you can't have the pay rise because then the health, in service, health service can't improve. That's disgusting. 
I don't know what you're on, Steve. Uh, ambulance drivers presumably are on a reasonable wage, but certainly nurses. Nurses are on a pittance. A pittance. And they've now told them they're not going to get their 1% rise, or they, they don't... I don't know if they've actually gone that far to say you're not going to get it, or they're, they're thinking of getting it. I'm not, not quite sure. Let me see if the story is... If I can see the story on here. Um, NHS... Uh, Workers pay rise. Let's have a quick look, see if I can find that. Here we are. Oh, it's in the Telegraph. Is it in the... Oh, no, we're going to... Oh, we got the BBC one. BBC, here we go. Unions have criticised proposals to halt an increase in NHS pay in England. Rises across the public sector had been capped at 1%. But the Department of Health wants to withhold this increase for its 1.3 million staff. Oh, come on. 1%. So for every pound they earn, they're going to get another penny. It's disgusting. Department of Health uh, proposes using the funding intended for the 1% rise to modernise pay structures. Now, what does that mean? Uh, you know what that means, don't you? It means some, some board or some boards in offices pushing their bits of paper around in the office, you know, signing a few forms. That's what it is for, management. Some pen pusher somewhere, rather than put it on the front services to these nurses and people in the front line who, let's face it, deserve a hell of a lot more than a 1% increase, don't they? It's going to modernise the pay structure. What is that? Some civil servant, is it? Is that what you mean by that? Some civil servant pushing their bits of paper around all over the place. Is that what you mean by that? It's disgusting. Were they not promised that 1%? Was that like a promise? Terrible. And they should have it. I think people, people in pay service, uh, uh, health services who do very, very important jobs should have a reasonable wage. I know someone's going to say to me, where's the money coming from? We'll take it from the management. Have you seen how much some of these um, managers get? NHS managers, eh? NHS managers pay. Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, this is interesting. We don't usually get this... Um, uh, this uh, uh, this, 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 into this sort of thing, do we? Here we are. Look at this. Look at this. This is from the Telegraph. Okay. Don't know what date this this uh, this story was. Um, twenty sixth of September. Okay, from the Telegraph. Former NHS chief executive who's retired with multi million pound pensions, um, and U.S. business executives are among those being paid twice as much as the managers they've replaced. An investigation by the Daily Telegraph found 24 managers, OK, NHS managers, being paid more than a £1,000, right, right? Are you ready for this? A day. A £1,000 a day during 2012-13, including 11 executives on more than, you ready for this, £300,000 a year. Let me read that again to you. An investigation by the Daily Mail, uh, Daily Telegraph, found 24 managers, these are um, NHS managers, uh, paid of rates than more than £1,000 a day, including 11 executives on more than £300,000 a year. That's where the money's going. That's where the money's going. Not to the nurses who are on the front line. They're the ones who are clearing up the sick, comforting little kids, that go, little children that come in and are crying their eyes out because of some sort of pain. It's the nurses. They're the ones who have to... Uh, scavenge around for a bandage because there's not enough bandages anymore. Because they haven't got enough money to buy any. Or they have to fill out ten forms to put a bandage on someone just in case someone steals a bandage. It's disgusting. It's where the money's going. 
All this management and bloody pen pushes all over the place. Last year, amid government orders for a clampdown on excessive pay to interim NHS managers, well, we, we've yet to see that yet, haven't we? You know, the Treasury disclosed 15 cases of NHS managers who were paid more than £1,000 a day via agencies. £1,000 a day. I mean, I thought I was well paid to be in a DJ and karaoke man. £1,000 a day. The highest annual weight was then £400,000 a year. £400,000 a year, that's the highest rate. But since February, Rotherham Foundation Trust has paid at least £47 a month. An annual rate of £570,000. Ten more executive, uh, executives, mostly retired NHS bureaucrats, were paid rates of at least £300,000 a year. Unbelievable. And they can't or they don't want to give the nurses the 1% that they said they were going to give them. Perhaps your thoughts on that on the email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk If you want to join in by email. Maybe you want to talk to us on the phone. Be nice to hear from you. We have a Skype. Skype in. Username is all one word. Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N all right. Or there's a phone in number, 020 8133 6358. Now, I don't work for the NHS. Maybe I'm talking about something I know nothing about. I get my little bits of information for that sort of thing from the paper, as you just heard the quotes there from the Daily Telegraph. Maybe you know more and you want to talk about it. Love to chat to you. 020 8133 6358 is your local London number. Or on Skype. If you're anywhere in the world, what's the health service like where you are? Use the Skype, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or if you're watching this on the YouTube recording, email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and we'll, use it, uh, uh, we'll do that next uh, week from your emails. Fagash Lil says, health workers deserve a 100% pay rise. I think we all do all agree on that, don't we? I went to the doctor this morning, funnily enough. Um, I was a little bit concerned I wasn't going to make the 12 o'clock um, show today because I've been to uh, the doctor this morning. Uh, we had a, I have a flu injection every year for me asthma. Although I don't have bad asthma. It's very, very mild, very, very mild, all completely under control. Had that for years. Um, so I had... Uh, they had a, a flu... Uh, jab walk-in thing between 8 and uh, 10 30 so i got there about 10 o'clock i'm telling you what i was in the doctor's surgery 45 seconds no more so i parked i pushed gone down there on my push bike parked the bike up locked it locked it to the doctor's sign <laughs> walked in hello there was no one in there. No one in there. Last time I did it, last year, I remember there was a queue and it went all around the doctor's surgery. Although it moved quickly, a little bit, little bit like being in the queue for Disney. Who been to Disney? Huh? The queues move fairly quickly. They do. I'm going to Disney in Florida with my nephew. Did I tell you? I take my nephew to Disney. That's this kind of part of the Barry Manilow thing. I was going anyway, and he said, oh, you know, I said to him, do you want to come? Because he was showing an interest. He said, yeah, all right, then, so I'm taking him as well. Um, but sadly, not coming to see Barry with me. He's just doing the Disney stuff. And um, so I got in the doctor's. There's no cure at all. There were two people standing at a table. Hello, would you like to want to fill out one of these? A little form. Just had to sign it and tell them that I had a bit of asthma. I said, OK, just take it and stand over there. I went over there. Two doctors standing. I had a choice of doctors. It was Dr. Tobin, who was nice, nice old man. He's a big old bloke um, with, with glasses. He looks like the teacher on Waterloo Road. You know, the big fat bloke with glasses. He looks just like him. That bloke in Waterloo. Maybe it's the same person. Maybe he's moonlighting as a doctor. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> but I went with the other one, so I went left. And he says, all right. I said, yep, you carry on. I'm not looking. I'll look the other way. And he cleaned 
put that cleaning stuff on the arm. No, I don't, do you know, it doesn't feel sore at all. They said it might be sore, but don't even feel like it. I said, right, I'm not looking. So I felt, just I felt, it didn't really hurt the needle when that went in, but I felt it when the, um, when the stuff went in. What is it? Flu vaccine stuff. I felt that going in, which wasn't, wasn't very pleasant. Come out there, got back on my bike, was back here by, what, well, by, by about quarter past ten? 45 seconds, I was in that doctor's surgery. Very impressed. And that's all part of our wonderful NHS. Listeners and viewers in America will be very pleased to know that we don't pay for any of that. I don't know if anyone can have a flu injection, if you see what I mean. It's, it's for elderly people over 65 and certain people like myself who might have something wrong with them. In my case, asthma and uh, another little thing that I've got. All right, so did that, come back here. Washing machine was on, washing machine finished. Just about hang the washing out in time to come up and do the show. Yes. Done the red stuff today. I, I have at last learnt not to put the reds in with everything else. Do you do that? Times I've done that, I tell you. And then, looked around, and on the floor is this massive bee. There's a bee on the floor. Crawling, obviously, you know, on its last legs. I thought, you poor thing. Because I don't like to kill things. We don't like to kill things. Not since the squirrel, squirrel invasion a couple of years ago in the loft. I don't... I don't I'm not going to go into that now. There was a terrible squirrel invasion in my loft a couple of years ago. It was a nightmare to get rid of them. It's in one of the shows. You'll have to look back. By the way, if you ever want to go back uh, on any of the old shows, you can find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk. That also at the top of there gives you the direct link for the live show, which you can watch uh, on Saturday mornings at uh, 12 o'clock UK time, which are in British summertime at the moment. Um, incidentally, uh, Richard says, Midnight is morning and midday is afternoon. So thank you, Richard. Richard in London. Or is it Watford? Oh, hang on a minute. Can't remember now, Richard. Where are you? So many different places you lived here, like a gypsy. Oh, yes, he moves from one house to the other. You know, he usually, I think Richard usually jumps the rent, don't you, Richard? He's, <laughs> he's one, he'd better not be living in one of my properties. <laughs> I, think, I think Richard's one of those people who, who, <laughs> who jumps the rent a little bit, are you? Good, <laughs> Good morning to Matthew. Morning, Matthew, who's in Croydon. What a dump that is. Anyone been to Croydon? Jesus. You take your life in your hands when you walk through there. Even when you're doing shopping. You know, you really do. Croydon, oh dear. And he says, do your shirt up. Is it undone? It's only, it's only one, two buttons undone. Don't you like to see a little bit of... My ladies like to see a little bit of flesh in the morning, Matthew. Thank you. Probably you are as well. Yes. Keep your hands above the table while you're watching my shows, please, if you don't mind, Matthew. Thank you. Um, good morning, Mike. Is it Eva's... Oh, can you wish Eva a happy 40th birthday? Eva, are you with us this morning? I gather that we're working together soon. Is that right? The Saturday before Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve, is it? One of those. I think we're working together soon. Eva's birthday today. Well, we'd better sing you happy birthday then. Just a minute. <laughs> Eva is 40 today. Do you know how old I am now, Eva? 50. Shocking, isn't it? Although people don't believe me because of my, my beautiful skin and natural complexion. Although I find it more difficult to pull now, I must say. Happy birthday, Eva. Don't know if I told you, Eva, but I've gone back to working at the Black Cap on Fridays. Yeah, I've been there three weeks now, and um, it's great. It's really good. In those three weeks, we've already... Uh, increase the uh, amount of people coming in there and now so it takes a couple of weeks let me just explain um i was at the black cat for 18 years it's a venue in um camden town which is in london i was there for 18 years i left in 2007 
um, and I've just gone back there three weeks ago, so it was a good six year break. When you when there is such a long break like that, um, and you go back in, you have to treat it like a new job, like you've never been there before. The entire crowd has changed. Okay, it's more of a mixed crowd now, which is quite nice, I think. I I, I do prefer the the whole the, the whole thing is is becoming more mixed now, which is great, I think, and. The first week, certainly, there was no one that I recognised. The second week, there were two girls. There was Jen and... Who's the other one now? Let me see. Jen and... Oh, gosh. Jen and Frankie, who were two girls I knew in the 90s in there. They were in there. Although one of them, she says, guess how old I am now, Chris? I said, go on. 62. She's 62. I, just, I thought she was... She looks about 45 to me. 62, one of the girls, and she was in there. Give it up, the old drink. All oh, right, Chris, how's it going, mate? Yeah, it was going very well. And then last night, uh, new customers started coming and talking to me. It takes you a little while. When you, when you go into a venue, because they are the new regulars, if you see what I mean. Although they're new customers, they're new customers to me, not new customers to the pub. So after a couple of weeks, they do start coming up and talking to you. And it was... Uh, one lad, he come, in, come up to us and says, oh, he said, really enjoyed the music tonight. He said, um, uh, we'll definitely be back next week. I said, are you regulars? He said, well, we've come a couple of times, but we hated the music. And I said, um, were they playing remixes by any chance? He said, that's right, we only want the originals. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I know. I said, that, that's, that's the, the, the secret to, to, to being a DJ for a long time is to listen to what the people are asking for. What generally happens, and this this is not a derogatory remark about other DJs, they do what they do, others do what they do. If you're like me, and there's plenty like me, indeed Mike, who's just uh, written in, is, is, is like me as well. You need to follow the fashion of the time, which is what I've always done, okay? There was a time in the 90s where the customers of the Black Cap and other venues wanted remixes. And it would be one long mix. One tune going into the next one, going into the next one, going into the next one. The entire night, was it was almost like listening to one long record the whole night with no breaks and roughly the same beat going through, going faster a little bit, a little bit slower. OK? That's how it was then. But a few years ago... <laughs> five, four, five, maybe six years ago, it changed. Whereas young people were coming up to me and asking for the tunes that they'd heard either on the radio or on uh, MUT, was it M, I don't even know what it's called, MTV, you see. That's the version they want me to play. So, okay. And also in that time, R&B came back in. I say came back in, well, maybe it's a bit longer than it, but probably about eight or nine years. R&B came back in. R&B never went away, but it became more mainstream, right? Also, a bit of rock was coming in. And you can't really mix house, rock, R&B together. It's very difficult to do it. Probably can if you put a lot of effort into it, but it's just not necessary because they don't want it. If I string a few tracks together now, like I used to in the 90s, the dance floor will clear. They know what they want. They come up and tell you what they want. And it's not hard. All you've got to do is play what they ask you to play. Now, if a DJ is of a certain period, maybe from the 90s, where they did remixes all night long, if you are still trying to push this on to people that don't want it, then I'm afraid you're finished. Or... You need to go into a big club in a big city like London where they do that sort of thing. And it's become, instead of becoming mainstream, it's more of a niche market, I think, now, playing these, these long mixes. Also, DJs, a lot of DJs don't take requests. Big mistake. You must play what you're being paid to play what people ask you for. It's as simple as that. You must take requests. Now, oh, I'm not taking requests. Oh, fine, you'll be out of a job. That's up to you, you know. You'll be out of a job. 
What is it that makes some DJs think that they are so bloody important? Huh? You're not that important. You're just the same as the glass collectors and the cleaners and the bar staff. You can't run a pub without any of these things. You, you, you lose the cleaner or you'll be closed in a couple of weeks. You're not that important, actually, DJ. It's not an important job. Really. Big secret to DJing is to make as many friends as possible with, with, with the audience. Okay? Then they will come back and talk to you next week. You've got to be a friendly person. I know some DJs that are incredibly unfriendly. What's all that about? <laughs> You're in the wrong job, mate. You really are. So there's the secret. You've got to keep moving with the times. I don't know, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm looking at the charts. Funnily enough, yesterday, while I was um, getting all my new uh, music down the line, uh, because uh, I'm very lucky, I have a couple of record companies, uh, Euro Solution, uh, well, they're not more, more promo promotion companies, they are, uh, Euro Solution, uh, Paparazzi, uh, they send me a, a lot of music. Uh, it, it all comes online now we don't get cds in the post anymore it all comes down line and you get this big list of records it's sometimes quite a lot of work but you get this list of records and, and you know you can download that sort of thing and you choose what you want and there's there's a bit of rock creeping back into it now i noticed rock certainly there's a new number one um is it the vibes i think it might be the vibes brand new number one and it's really good. Nice little rocky tune, that is. And there's a bit more rock creeping in. So maybe in, in three or four years' time, there'll be a lot more rock music back in the charts now again. Oh, we had some recently. Um, uh, what's that? Sex on Fire. Who sings that again? Whoa! Oh, and, and, and Use Somebody, that group. Hang on a minute. I can't remember who they are. Let me look it up. It's um, Kings of Leon. They're quite popular. Kings of Leon. I still get people ask for Queen, that sort of thing. So maybe a little bit of rock music coming back in there. Be nice. But that's the secret of long longevity, DJ. You must move with the crowd. If you don't, that's it. You're out. Or you start falling out of favour. You know. Uh, Mike says, uh, thank you for singing to Eva. I've just recorded it and sent her the clip. <laughs> You are working together. Yes, I think the Saturday before New Year's Eve. If I'm there on the same date, then we're together, yes. Um, he says, I agree with uh, MTV. It is the, the tunes people come up and ask you for what they've seen on MTV. Um, when they are all drunk, some DJs get away with it. Yeah, what, what you mean the crowd? Uh, the crowd gets drunk, yes, but can you still put on anything... No, I don't think so. No, I think even when they're drunk, they, they generally know what they want. When they're drunk, I, I do tend to get a bit worried because they come up to you with their pints of lager and it nearly goes all over your laptop, doesn't it? It's all very scary, really. Um, Mike says, I did a traveller's birthday with requests and they took £2,000 over the bar. Hence, I got a tip and gained some bookings. They're just like everyone else. What, travellers? Of course they are. Travellers, nothing wrong with travellers. They used to come into my karaoke nights. Mike, dare I ask you what the travellers paid you for the night? Or wasn't the travellers paying you? I'm dying to know. Was that a good little little wage? Am I allowed to tell people that or not? Or is it a little secret? Do let us know, Mike, OK? Email address once again, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Be nice to hear from you this morning. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N is a Skype username. And, of course, the phone number as well, 20 6358 20 Now, um, bicycles. Bicycles. I've been a cyclist since I can remember. I am, dare I say, a good cyclist, okay? On the roads, I will stop at a red light, right? That's, that's the big thing with drivers and cyclists. I'm, of course, the driver and a cyclist. I do not understand cyclists who go through the red lights. In particular, it seems to be a problem in London. Actually, out where I live in Bracknell, in Berkshire, um, I cycle to Wokingham every day. 
And I don't ever see anyone go for a red light, strangely enough. But certainly in London, there's a particular area around uh, Old Street. And if you ever drive around there, you will see countless cyclists jumping red lights. It's horrific. There was one last, actually last week, I was at the traffic lights at just before Vauxhall Bridge on the south side. I was going straight across. The lights went green. I've moved off, and at that point, a cyclist gone straight across me, and I said, slam on my brakes. Someone ne nearly hit me up the rear end. What an idiot. They want to die. Some of these cyclists, I swear, want to die. It's really bad in London, so if you're a cyclist, why are you risking that? It's stupid. Don't go through red lights. Anyway, the reason I brought up the bikes is that my bike needs repairing. Was just jumping on the bike yesterday to go down to the uh, swimming pool in uh, Wokingham, where I go Vir virgin, virgin active in Wokingham. I've been a little bit unhappy with them recently because whenever something goes wrong, it seems to take ages to fix it. The most recent thing is the spin dryer. Now, you might think to yourself, I'm having a little moan here about nothing. But they have this little spin dryer. So when you've had your shower, you put your little shorts into... Because I don't wear Speedos. I'm, I, I'm not really the right shape anymore to wear Speedos. The only piece of people that wear Speedos are fat, balding, middle-aged men. A little bit like myself. But they wear, some of them wear Speedos. What do they look like? <laughs> you, you know what I mean, ladies, don't you? They just look dreadful. What do they think they look like in these budgie smugglers? But they do. Anyway, so I take my shorts off, add my shower, and I'm under the shower. Oh, it's wonderful. Because, of course, you know, I've got a water meter here. I never used a shower here. I go in that shower in that virgin active place. Oh, I'm under that shower for 20 minutes. Full blast. Lovely and hot water. Well, I say hot. I'll come on to that in a minute. And you've had your shower. You take your, take your, you, you know, you take your, because they're little cubicles. They're all like, you know, sectioned off. So you're in that cubicle on your own. Take the trunks off, uh, the shorts off. Add my shower. Lovely. Then you go to this little spin dryer. You put, put your shorts in there. Push them down. Close the lid. Bzzz, Ten seconds and that's it. It's supposed to be about five to ten seconds. Some people, have they got their hand on this bloody thing for half an hour. No wonder they break. Anyway, it broke a few weeks ago. About two months ago, actually. The thing has been out of order between six and eight weeks. It's just disgusting. It seems to take ages to get any, anything repaired in this blooming place. So then it goes back on the wall on the Monday. Ah, fantastic. So I put my trunks in. And it was quiet. Didn't didn't make that loud, very loud whirring noise. I thought, fab, that's it. Tuesday, did it go into the... Wednesday, it's out of order again. It was out of order for six weeks. They obviously sent it away somewhere, brought it back. It worked twice, two days, and then died again. Disgusting. So that's that thing. Also, uh, do you remember last November, I told you that the swimming pool was really cold. They eventually got that fixed. It took them three to four months to work out what was wrong with that. And in that time, that pool was really cold. It was, I know, like, you know, when you go in the pool and it's got, oh, it's a bit cold. And then you swim and it's warm. Well, let me tell you, I would do my 60 lengths and I would still be cold. That's how cold this bloody pool was. Eventually they fixed it. But ever since they fixed it, the showers have been fluctuating. Not too badly, right? But now and again... You'll be under it, oh, it's gone a little bit cold. Now, if you've got it on warm instead of hot, then it goes from warm to cold, then that is cold. Similarly, and it can be dangerous the other way, because if you've got it on hot, then it can get very hot suddenly. And it's been doing that ever since last November when they fixed the pool. Right? So, Thursday, I'm under this shower, my usual 20-minute shower. And I thought to myself, um, 
This share's not fluctuating now. Have they at last fixed this bloody thing? And on the Friday, I went in again, had my shower, and I thought, it's still not doing it. The showers are not fluctuating, but the pool has gone cold again. <laughs> so I went downstairs, and there's the manager, Sean, who's a very nice man. Always got time to talk to you. Always pleasant. He listens to if you've got any complaints. And uh, fifty pound a month. I always complained here. Always got a little complaint for him. Keeps them on their toes, doesn't it? Eh? And I says to him, "Do you want the good news or the bad news, Sean?" He said, "Go on. Good news is you fix the showers." He said, "Oh, the fluctuated." I said, "Yes, at last." What was it? He said, we don't know, to be honest. He's the top maintenance man came down from wherever he comes from. You know, probably from heaven, the clouds above. I don't know where he comes from. Top man had come down from above and um, come in, had a look at all the stuff, and have done something, and that's fixed it. I said, fantastic, at last. Only took ten months. Eleven months. Eleven months. Do you want the bad news now? He said, I know what you're going to say. I said, OK, then. I said, what's, what's caused that? He said, what happened? Uh, some people came in last night. They were working on the pool uh, at night time, apparently, between the hours of 10pm uh, and 5am. They were actually working on the swimming pool. And uh, they t to work on it, they had to turn off the heater and they didn't turn it on again. How stupid can you be? So poor Chris has suffered on that. There must be something I can fill in to get some money somewhere. They forgot to turn the eating back on again, so apparently that's for that. But it does take them a blooming long time uh, to fix the um, uh, to, to fix anything that seems to go wrong in that pool. There was a urinal out of order for ages. We were having to queue up here to go and wee. Terrible. Please do not use this urinal. And I knew that because for months it was filling up. You know, you go stand there and go to go and have a wee, and it would just all fill up with water. It was awful. Had to be careful the thing didn't overflow. <laughs> Why does it take so long for these companies to fix things? Fifty pound a month I pay them, off peak. And they don't offer you anything back, do they? Oh, I'm sorry you've had so much. Here's two months free membership. Oh no, can't have anything like that. Shocking. Chris at United Kingdom Talk .co .uk is the email address. So, back to the bicycle. So I cycled to and from the swimming pool. Um, got on the bike yesterday morning to go down there. And I'd noticed something had been squeaking. It was so annoying. You know, you go out, every time you go over a bump, squeak. It's even worse if you've got, have you got that in the car? Anyone got that in the car? A squeak in the car. You can't find what it is. How annoying is that? So I had a look at the back and I realised the back rack had become detached on one side. There were two bolts missing, so they must have fallen out at some point, I suppose. So, I thought, oh, God, I have to go and get that fixed now. I, I turned around because I'd actually started cycling and I thought, oh, I must go and find out what it is. And, I, you know, about three minutes down the road, I, I got off the bike and I looked. I said, what is causing this, 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 this squeaking all the time? And I found it was the, the, the rack, two bolts had come up and it was kind of hanging down one side. Because, of course, I've got two bags on the back as well. One's got my swimming stuff in and the other one, it looked like it was going to rain. So I had my wet stuff in it. Well, it had started to rain. So that, that's why I got off the bike, really, to put the wet stuff on because it had started to rain. Anyway, worked out. Um, that's what it was. So I thought, I'll go and get that fixed now. So I then cycled into town. Instead of going swimming, I cycled the other way into town and took it to the bike shop. We've got this bike shop in Bracknell. Bracknell cycles. Uh, bloke in there fixes all the time. He never seems very happy. <laughs> he doesn't smile a lot. I don't know why that is. Maybe if he watched a few of my shows or listened to a few of my shows, he might smile. Incidentally, if you just want to listen to the show, maybe you're watching this on YouTube or... Or, or Blip TV. If you just want to download the audio on the show, that's very easy. 
unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the place you want to be for that. Or you can subscribe via iTunes. In the iTunes podcast section, just type in United Kingdom Talk and then you'll be offered either the video or the audio version. Click subscribe free of charge and you can get it automatically like that as well. Or download manually by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. He never seems very happy. Now, the last couple of times I've been in there, um, I saw a younger bloke with glasses. Um, It was really nice. The only thing is, it was a little bit enthusiastic about the whole cycle thing. And you started talking, or you couldn't get out of the shop once you started talking. You know. I mean, I like to have a conversation with people, but some people, they just go on and on and on, don't they? And you're thinking, oh, for God's sake, will you get to the point? You know, they go off on different subjects about this, that and the other. And you're trying to get, you know, trying to get away and think, oh, for God's sake, please get on with it. I know what you mean, believe me. Anyway, so I said, where's the bloke with the glasses? Oh, he's gone there. I haven't seen him for a few months. I said, oh, you're on your own here now. Still still the miserable face. And he said, uh, well, yeah. He said, um, we haven't got a lot of work on, to be honest. So, you know, we can't employ anyone. I said, oh, that's a shame. And I, you know, I wonder why that is. No cycle shop. You'd think they'd be busy with repairs and all that. There is a Halford just down the road. And I, mean, I, don't, I didn't really compare prices, but um, I, I, I assume that, uh, 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 that they're, they're roughly that it would be cheaper in Halfords to buy a bike. Um, although the, with repairs and that, you know, you generally have to drop something off and pick it up the next day or something like that. With, with the little cycle shop, you can just go in there and get it repaired. So I said, oh, could you do this for me? Also, I said, could you change the tube on the front? I said, because the, the something's gone wrong with the valve and that the when you pump up the tyre, you have to do it up with a, with a pair of pliers because it doesn't screw tight enough. So he said, do that. I said, could you also have a look at the gears for me? Because they keep jumping off the last one and this, and and then um, uh, they slip on, on number five. And sometimes when they go from one to two, it, the chain actually jams. Uh, the chain actually jams. So he said, yeah, I can, I'll can. i look at those things for you. He said, um, should, should be done by the end of the day. I said, OK. And it was, but what was the time? It was about up past 10 hours. I said, could I come back at 3 o'clock? Do you think you'd be ready by then? He said, yeah, you can try if you want. I said, OK. So that was it. So I come back home. And then uh, my mate and his other half, uh, they took us out for, uh, I went out to Frankie and Benny's for a pizza yesterday as part of my calorie controlled diet, you know. At a Frankie and Benny's pizza. I don't go to pizza anymore. Um, I kind of go into Frankie and Benny's. Oh, that, that'll upset Mike because he's a Pizza Hut manager, aren't you, Mike? Now, I've started going to Frankie and Benny's. They have the thin crust thing there. And I had that. And a Coke and this, this big chocolate ice cream thing. which was very nice. Um, and then I, I, I walked over there and it, it was all done. The, the, well, the bike was done. He said, right, well, I've changed your inner tube on the front. He said, and I've refixed your rack, that pushed you 17 pounds. I thought, well, okay, that's fair enough for those two little jobs, fine. He said, right, the gear's changing. I'm afraid you're, now, where is it now? He says, um, you need to have a new chain, a new cassette, and new cables. And he says, um, the total cost for this will be 160 pounds. And I'm like, hundred and six. I said, well, I've only had it two years. He said, well, it's worn out. He says, um, you can't really change uh, one thing. He said, all these, all these things are worn out. And um, it's hundred and sixty quid. I said, well, you know, uh, I could get a new bike for two hundred and fifty. Do you know what I mean? You could get a reasonable bike for two hundred and fifty quid. You can actually get a bike in Alfred's for about 160 if you if you want the the real bottom of the range one. And he said, "Well, it's up to you." He said, um, "Just just come back in and let us know what you want to do at some point." But um, you can take that away now with a punch and that. So, uh, handed over the 17 quid. And, and you know, I don't believe one moment that he's trying to uh, make money out of a job that isn't really there. I do believe him, but 160 quid. And on that, he's only charged 
for that, look, the parts, 85, 30, and 20, 85, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. So he's only charged £35 labour for that lot. That's, that's very reasonable. But the parts, 85, 95, 105, 125, 130, the parts are 135 quid for a chain, a cassette, and cables. It's a hell of a lot of money. And I'm thinking here, years ago when I was a child, not, not a child, a young man in my 20s, and also when I was a child, from the age of seven, I had a bike. And right up until a few years ago, I don't ever remember having to change a gear set. That's it, the gear set. Or a cassette. I don't know what is it. What's a cassette? Is that the gear set? The cassette. I don't ever, ever having to remember having to change a gear set or a cassette or a chain or the rings going around it or cables or anything like that. These things never needed to be changed. Certainly in my twenties, uh, we used to live in Roehampton. I lived with my mum and dad um, and my sister, of course, and I used to cycle over to Wimbledon. Now that was that was a. That was a, that was an hour round journey, half hour there, half hour back, and I did this for years and years. Never had to have any of these things changed. It was the same when I was a child. When I was always out on your bike. You know, when you're a, a child and you've got a bike, you're always out on it, aren't you? Never had to change anything like that. Right up to um, nineteen nineteen ninety five, I would say. Not once did I ever have to change any of these items, okay? Around 1995, I bought another bike. 95, 96, 97, 1997, I bought another bike, right? Which seemed to last for quite a time. Then eventually things started slipping. I took it in after about 15 years. After 15 years, I took it in. Oh, the gears are slipping. Can you have a look at the gears? Da, 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 da. Yep, okay. Okay, well, you need to need a new chain and a new gear set. I said, oh, why is that? Oh, it's worn out. You can see. So I looked at this thing, and, you know, you, you, do, you don't really know, do you? You don't really know. You, you're not a, a bike person or a mechanic or anything like that. You don't actually know that these things need to be done. So I said, oh, right, okay. I said, well, we can do those then. So that was that, and, and, and he did them, and the bike was fine after that. Two years later, these things started slipping again. So I took it back again. I said, I think the gears have gone out of adjustment. Now, to adjust gears is actually quite a simple thing. You just turn this thing at the gear lever thing. as supposed to adjust gears. For some reason, I just can't get the knack of that. And I seem to make it worse than it already is. I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, so I took it down there again. Da -da -da -da. He said, uh, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, you, you, you've worn out your chain and your gears. I said, you're joking, you only did it two years ago. He said, oh, yeah, well, how much do you cycle? I said, well, a fair bit. He said, well, that's probably why then. I said, yeah, but these things are not lasted. This, 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 is, this hasn't lasted like the other ones. He said, well, I don't know why that is. He said, but that, that's what the problem is. All right, OK. Oh, well, you better change them. So he changed them. Once again, the bike was all right again. And then a little while later, a couple of years later, guess what? It all started slipping again. Took it back into to another place this time because I thought, oh, are you having me on here? And he took it in the back, come back out. He said, yeah. He said, what it is, um, you've all worn down at the back there. These all need replacing. I said, gear and chain by any chance? He said, that's right. I said, well, I said, how's that then? Why is this stuff not lasting? I said, actually, and I'd had the bike now at this point 18 years. And I thought, I'll tell you what, I'll buy a new bike this time. So I had a look around. This was in Berkshire Cycles, which is in Crowthorne, just down the road. It's a nice little ride down there on your bike to the actual, actual place, to be honest. I took the bike in. Come back. Um, I said, OK, I'll, I'll choose a bike. And so I chose a bike there, and he let me take it out for a little ride up and down the road. I said, well, I'll be happy with that one. I said, can you put my, 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 um, 
uh, bags. Take off the bags on that and put them on that one, and the bell as well, please. Okay, so he did all that. Paid me money, and off I went. Brand new bike. You know, new bike, 18 years. I thought, yeah, that's all right. You know, don't mind that a bit. And that was just just about two years ago now. And, of course, the last couple of weeks I've noticed things are slipping. Take it down there, and he's told me it needs £160 worth of bits and pieces to put on. So, I just think that they've changed the metal in what they, what, what, which they make these things out of. Is that possible? Is it that the metal is now soft or is coming from bloody China or somewhere like that and it's just not up to the standard that we used to have? I'm sure this is the case. As if, have we got any cyclists or anyone like that listening to the show that have noticed this as well? Someone who cycles a lot. Have you noticed in the last 10 years the cogs on the back, the gear cogs, and the chains are now only lasting a couple of years where they used to last before 10, 15 years or more. Then I'd be very, very interested to hear from you. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk right? chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Because I do the old cycling. It's all part of my exercise regime. But I'm, I'm a bit... I don't really want to spend £160. Pound. To be honest, you know, I, I, I can put up with it. It's just a little bit of annoyance. Now and again, the gear might slip. Which, well, If the gear slips, what I do is then go up a gear and back down one again, and then it works. So it's not too much. It's not like I can't use the bike. And it's a nice bike. It's a blue one. I've got a blue bike. And... He's certainly not ripping me off for the labour there, 35 quid labour, 130 odd pound parts. It's a lot of money on, on, on just a few bits of metal, isn't it? Uh, Mike says, we have to kill it with kindness, every miserable person, dear. <laughs> yeah, I go in now, I keep smiling, even though he did look miserable. He said it's a rip-off. Well, I don't know. He says, all parts are from China these days and not made to last. I think that, that's, that, that's got to be it, mate. That is it. That is exactly it. This stuff is, is being made in a different way, and it's made to fail after a certain amount of time. Terrible waste, really. I did have a little look online, and there were... Um, people on there on the on this cycling forum and I found bits what were talking out of uh, talking about chains and things like that and there were various people saying oh they 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 tried the more expensive change and they were no better the change and they were no better they they would they wouldn't last either so that's it you know he says it's all al aluminium. I don't know what the chains are made out of, Mike. Are they made of aluminium? I mean, I know the bikes are made of aluminium, but that's okay because the the frame doesn't wear out. You know, it's these is these parts. It's the gear cogs on the back and the chains. Anyone know anything about that? Do let us know, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Uh, good morning to Vectis on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, sir. Who says, hi, Chris. How much does your membership cost a month at Virgin Active? Uh, £50. Pounds. £50 pounds a month. He says, I bet the manager is in hot water. Well, <laughs> it was when the, sh when the showers were fluctuating. Not in the swimming pool on Friday, though, Vectis. It was bloody cold. My poor little... All my bits were going... My chest was going... My nipples were going hard. It was so cold in there, dear. That's not a very nice sight either. Thag Ashleel says, Why is it when swimming it makes you want to wee more? Well, it doesn't make me want to wee more, uh, Thag Ashleel. Well, shan't be getting in the pool with you then, dear. Oh, no. You're not one of those people that wees in the pool, are you? Pool, are you? <laughs> oh, my God. Don't use pools in the Brighton area if Thag Ashleel's in there because she, she wees in the pool. Thank you, Fagash Lil. I've got uh, no emails this week, uh, except from 
um, John, who last week sent us in a little audio message and is sent in another audio message this week. Now, rather naughtily, I haven't listened to this yet, and John writes, I hate whistling. Why do women not whistle? Because they know. I like whistling, John. Do, don't you? What's wrong with whistling? We like a little bit of a whistle, don't you? Don't you like a little bit of whistling? It's like the old milkman whistling or the postman as he came round, whistling away. Although not as nice a sound as the Mr Whippy, uh, Mr Tony Bell ice cream brand that we like coming round, is he? Huh? You like the ice creams, don't you? I know. Got to be Mr Whippy, though. Or in Italy, gel gelatino or whatever. Gelato. Beautiful ice creams in Italy. Massive ice creams for a couple of euros. It is. Right, so... um Let's have a little listen. I'll have to listen on my phone because I haven't got my earphones plugged in. Let's have a little listen to um, John's uh, John's little audio message that he sends in this week. Here's a little message from John. Oh, come on! Before I have a rant this week, I want to confess two things. Two things that have happened. One was a bad thing. And I suppose the other was a backwards thing. Or more correctly, an upside down thing. I'll do the second first. I'm not a vegetarian by any stroke of the meat cleaver. I noticed in my local branch of in Sainsbury's that they were selling off the old swine fleece, that is, Dutch for pork, and they were doing it rather cheaply. But imagine my horror after perusing and choosing some plumptious visceral cuts and taking one packet to the till that I found myself reading the label a little more closely. Upon it was the appellation dog dog after the scandal of pony flesh on the shelves what the hell was happening in this supermarket i tentatively placed the package on the travelator thing and i realized that i'd read it upside down and it was actually 8 og 80 grams ah i unfortunately still partake in madame tabac and finding myself lacking in a turkish slipper full of the virginian weed I stopped off at in Sainsbury's to purchase some rolling tobacco. OK, I asked the lady vendor whether she would show me her range of goodies, but she said it was against the law. OK, says I. Can I have a packet of the one with the picture of a man having a heart operation, or the other with the small kid breathing in the smoke, as I am collecting them and want the full set? Confused, <laughs> she opened up the whole caboodle, and showed me what she had. Mm. <laughs> Hence, instantly negating the very regulations she should have been following. I requested one brand, but as my glasses are in for repair, I had problems in the old backwards and upside down department again, and requested her to give me BJ. Which one, she asked. BJ, I said. I want some BJ. Turns out I had mistaken the upside down JPS logo. Now, the main rant. Whistling. Who can forget the evocative Roger Whittaker's duet with Des O'Connor of the Sky Boat Song released in 1986, which combined O'Connor's brilliant vocals with Whittaker's whistling virtuoso? But recently, commercial radio stations have become replete with itinerant whistlers as though whistling has become the new forte in the marketing strategist's portfolio. Stop it! The advert for this year's Stoptober, Let's Stop Smoking piece, has an annoying whistly refrain which invades the brain. A listening hip-hop tune has some Bronx-based hardened denizen quoting, Listen to my whistle, ya girl and then pathetically whistles a brain worm destined to pervade the mind and annoy for hours. Worst of all, I recently flew to the Hellenic island of Crete for a conference on polymeric science. All the way there, as I was taking a crash course in Greek, which proved immensely useful, by the way, by learning such phrases as 
Hello, Mr. Taxi Driver. We are English, not Nazis. Please charge us less than the Nazis who we both fought valiantly against in 1941. And your home-brewed raki is the best I have tasted in this village. Chris, I used both these phrases with fantastic results. But someone on the plane was whistling. It took me three of the four hours flight time to identify the malcontent as a grandfatherly Bobby Charlton type gentleman who had tunelessly whistled for the entire journey. But as I was restrained by protocol and my secretary from intervening in his musical performance, I said nothing. Six days later, after a beatific sojourn on Sin Island, taking in the magnificent of ancient city of Knossos, the spice markets of Heraklion and the leper colony of Spelonga, we boarded the plane and within five minutes after takeoff, the whistling began again. He was behind me, my nemesis, the whistler. I turned and was confronted by an ugly red-faced woman who said that he whistled when nervous and hoped I could understand. To my ultimate shame, I withdrew and was berated with various rubbish and antagonising versions of such classics <clears throat> as a skyboat song. Now, Chris, I don't believe, I don't, I don't believe, since I was caught eating toast in the industrial plant library by the director's one-eyed secretary, and she said I wasn't allowed to eat toast, and I told her, I'll do what I want you wide munch bucket that we should ever let things lie and back at Heathrow I went to the big boys room for relief and who was there but the whistling man relieving himself and guess what whistling not so nervous anymore without any hesitation I went over and said not so nervous now are you Bobby Charlton and I pushed him which unfortunately made him wee all over his trousers. I shouted, brutal justice, and I ran off. <laughs> to this day, I am proud of my actions, even if they were not entirely correct. Whistlers, shut up. Oh, come on! <laughs> Thank you, John, for your little uh, audio message. Uh, we, we are loving your audio messages here. Any chance of one a week? We love John's audio messages. Uh, John, do, do, is this the tune he was whistling? whistling? Is that, was that the tune? I can't do that. Can you do that whistle where you put both fingers in? How do they do that? I can't get any sound out of I've never been able to whistle with two fingers in my mouth. Um, didn't know you were starting to eat dogs as well. Now, are they selling those in the supermarket where you are now then? Dogs and smoking. I love the fact you've started collecting all the little, little pictures of people dying and lung cancers and heart operations and things like that on, 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 the, little, on, on, the, on the cigarettes. I mean, I know someone that may be actually sending uh, a little picture. I can't say who it is, but this person will be amused by this. They've recently had a stroke. And I'm going to suggest to that person that they're sending a picture of themselves with the one face hanging down like that to the cigarette company's impossible use. Of. Maybe you'll get paid for that. I don't know. You know, dear... Dear, um, dear, dear Rothmans, please find enclosed a picture of myself after recently having a stroke. I have smoked your cigarettes for many years and it is possible that the stroke may have been caused by some of your cigarettes or may not. However, if you think like me that possibly it has, Please feel free to use my photograph on the front of your cigarettes uh, for a small nominal charge of £500 per month. 
Thank you. <laughs> we love it. Collecting the cigarette packets of all the horrible images. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you, John. Um, and that's it. There we are. I, I was, I was going to go on to something else, and I can't remember what it was now. Um, Mike says uh, it's about ninety pounds to join the um, gym where he is. Of course, is it really ninety pounds? Yeah, but is that because the, they have two prizes? They have a peak price and an off-peak price as well. Okay. Fag Ashley says last time I went swimming, they thought I was there to join the antenatal class. The thing is, I wasn't pregnant. So I haven't been since. Though if I tried now, I'd just end up going round in circles. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, finally, today, I've loads so much to talk about. We, we, and as I said to you before, um, I, I tend to write down a load of things to talk about we never get to the end of it because I kind of start going off in all different directions and then your messages come in and we start talking about different things and bits and pieces there oh I meant to tell you um, I, I, I put I, I usually I use the tweet thing as well Chris Reardon UK is my Twitter thing but I don't I don't use it that much but when I do put a tweet on there about the show and you remember we were talking about the Vatican because I'd been to visit the Vatican in Rome a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I talked about this in the show and put that within the tweet. A, a cardinal at the Vatican has favoured one of my tweets. How fantastic is that? A cardinal at the Vatican. There I am, moving another step closer to, to heaven. One small step, but nevertheless, a step closer to heaven. By having one of my tweets favoured, by a cardinal in the Vatican. I'm gobsmacked by that, believe me. I really am gobsmacked. Good to say, also, happy birthdays, birthdays just past George the Toddler, who is my niece's baby, is now one year old. George, happy birthday, George. And other good news, yes, yet another baby is on the way, this time from my niece, Tracy. She's going to have another one. So even more children to play. We love it. More children to play with at Christmas. Because let's face it, you know, the niece and nephews are both a bit old now. Both part 25 and 28 or 29, I think, is the other nephew. I mean, it's a bit boring and old. I'm sorry. We've had fun when you were a child, Gary and Tracy. But now you're old and boring. Just like you used to say your mum and dad was. Do you remember telling me that? Oh, mum and dad are boring. They're old. Yet, for some reason, Uncle Chris was never boring. And I still am not. I'm so happy that it is again. But I'm afraid, you know, just like your mum and dad, you two have now become boring. You're too old. So thank you very much for providing new children for me to spoil and play with at Christmas time and birthdays and on my visits up there. We love it. Well done, Tracy. Oh, text message here. Spam fritters. Spam fritters. No, Steve, you can't be eating spam, fr spam fritters. We used to have those until I become vegetarian. Well, I've become vegetarian only a couple of years ago now. Oh, I was on LBC this week, did I tell you? I was on LBC. No, no, not as a presenter, I'm afraid. They haven't asked me yet. I live in hope that one day someone on LBC might accidentally hear one of these little shows. Oh, he's not too bad. Let's give him a go. But I don't think it's going to happen, is it? We're, st <laughs> We're stuck on podcasts and YouTubes. Never mind. But I, I rung up Clive Bull on LBC. He was asking um, about what, what made you become vegetarian or vegan. And from my point of view, it wasn't a health issue, anything like that. It was a whole animal cruelty thing. You can find plenty of videos. I'm not going to tell you about them now. Just go onto YouTube, type in animal cruelty or um, mistreatment of pigs or cows or chickens or anything like that. you find them all there. Even when they're, mis when they're not mistreated, they have to die. You know, even when they're not mistreated... They have a bolt put through their head, and I can't be doing with any of that. So that's uh, why I became a vegetarian. I rang up Clive Bull on LBC 97.3. Is that everything? Let me see. 
Uh, I think it is. Is that all? Tube dark lights. Yep, that's it. Nearly it. Oh, nearly it. I am on a little bit of a diet at the moment, boys and girls. I've cut out wheat and bread. Okay? And up to Thursday, uh, between Sunday and Thursday, I've managed to lose two pounds in weight. No crisps. No chocolate. No wheat products. Anything to do with wheat. Except, of course, for the pizza I was dragged out, forced, against my will, yesterday, to Frankie and Benny's to have a pizza. Oh, they're pouring in now these 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 um these text messages from Steve. Can't use a bloody computer like everyone else. An email and a spat and a, and a, and a Skype, huh? <laughs> has to be different, and he has to be different. Where was I? Oh yes. So I have managed to lose two pounds, and then you know, as always happens, I came out my door yesterday night, and. Walking towards my door was Pearl. Now, Pearl's one of my neighbours. She lives two doors down. Lovely lady. Really nice, nice lady. She's got uh, uh, children herself. One's uh, 40. Uh, you know, so she's a uh, grandmother, Pearl. And she's got this large box in her hand. She says, all right, Chris. I said, all right, Pearl. She said, oh, I've got this for you. And she's just been on holiday. And she handed me this box of vanilla fudge. Not a small box, a large box of vanilla fudge. And, you know, I looked at it and I thought, oh, that looks delicious. And I rushed in, thanking her, of course. Thanking her for, oh, you try and lose this weight, you know. You, you purposely go out of your way not to buy um, chocolates and crisps and things like that. And then... Someone out of the goodness of their heart buys me a large box of fudge. Well, I, I went in and thought, well, I'll have a couple. I had half the box. It was so nice. Vanilla fudge. Have you, ever, do you, have you had vanilla fudge? Oh, it's beautiful. Not only vanilla fudge, clotted cream vanilla fudge from Devon. I mean, how fantastic to have something made in Devon. I looked everywhere on that packet and nowhere did it say made in China. I couldn't believe my luck. So I've had that now. Haven't weighed myself today. <laughs> but I'm now going to leave it. I'm not going to weigh myself until next Friday. OK? Last week, about this time, I was 13 stone 5. I'm now 13 stone 3. I think it's three. Thirteen stone three I was yesterday before the fudge. I'm not going to weigh myself until next Friday. I hope next Friday to be tell you um, that I'm thirteen stone. I would like to lose about a stone. So I will be... I would like to get down to about twelve stone two, something like that. So fingers crossed we'll see if we can get it. Anyway, that's it from the show today. Thank you very much for watching uh, and listening. If you're in the London area tonight at uh, Saturday the 5th of October 2013, then I'm hosting karaoke in the Hammersmith area at a place called the Lorry Arms in Shepherd's Bush Road, Hammersmith, London, uh, between 9pm and 1am. It's completely free entry in there. It's a lovely little venue. We actually set up in a large conservatory, which is kind of to the side of the pub. And behind us, we've just had a, a new student place opening, so we might have a load of students in there as well, right? So that's uh, Saturday tonight, Saturday the 5th of October 2013, karaoke being hosted uh, by myself at the Lorry Arms in Shepherd's Bush Road, Hammersmith, 9pm to 1am. Tomorrow, uh, also hosting karaoke tomorrow in Camden Town at Belushi's in Camden High Street, OK? That's free entry again. The hours to that one are 8pm till 12 midnight. So that's tomorrow, Sunday the 6th of October. Is it 6 tomorrow? Yep, yeah, Sunday the 6th of October, 2013, karaoke, uh, Sunday night, each and every Sunday at Belushi's in Camden High Street, London. OK, thanks so much for watching and listening. Don't forget, if you want to send us an email, please feel free to do so. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you want to be with us live, then I'll see you again next Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. 
Thanks for watching and listening.